Hey guys, Paul here. Flip-flop circuits are a lot of fun, and today I'm featuring the 4011 and 555 timer integrated circuits for a set-reset audio circuit. And I'm also showing some cool eBay scores I got recently for you breadboard enthusiasts. Let's check it out. Now I know full well that the rechargeable 1.2 volt 3000 milliamp batteries are more economical uh, for breadboarding and Arduino projects. And, and this is a great solution, but I mean, how convenient is a nine volt battery really? Recently I've scored these 600 milliamp rechargeable nine volt batteries. I'm gonna put links to this stuff in the description. Um, considering that the standard Energizer nine volt rechargeable is 75 milliamps, 600 milliamps is quite an improvement and I'm really enjoying using these for my breadboard projects. Just so convenient, so simple. So you may want to check that out. Also, um, I'll never go back to using these little flimsy pieces of junk uh, reset momentary switch buttons. Get yourself some nice wide buttons here. Pick these up on eBay. Got some really nice connectors. I mean, these snap into your breadboard like really like snapping like a button. See, I've got two here on this project today. Nice click response. I also picked up some male jumper wires and that's what I've got using here in this project today. Um, I previously used these female jumper wires and then I just got a bunch of header pins and I would turn them into male and female depending on my application. However, they get stripped out after a while and the header pins end up recessed in your breadboard. They become loose. They don't make good connections. And for sure, this is these are great to have for Arduino and you definitely want to have some female jumper wires for that um, convenience, for that versatility. But I bought some of this um, breadboard jumper wire um, tinned ends. I mean, it looked really good. But man, these just do not stay in the holes of my breadboard. So maybe you guys could give me some advice below your preferred breadboard uh, connecting wire. But I mean, this stuff is just junk. So I'm just sticking by my mail, my new mail um, jumper wires. That's what I've got going on all, all here today. They come in different sizes, long ones, short ones, and it just works out really well. Now in previous videos, I've covered the 4011 NAND logic chip, as well as the 4093B Schmidt trigger logic chip, which is um, a NAND chip as well. And I'm also using the NAND chip right here in the center of the project today. And I've got two 555 timers on each side of that chip and uh, momentary reset buttons corresponding to each 555 timer. On paper, here's what we've got going on. Two push button switches, two 555 timers, and a 4011 NAND chip. The 4011 is a quad chip, quad outputs, with outputs on pins 3 and 4. 8 and 9 are inputs. 10 and 11 up here would be outputs and 12 and 13 are inputs. I'm not using those, I'm just using it as a uh, dual chip, if you will. And one of the, one of the inputs um, is connecting to our push button switch here. And the magic with the flip-flop circuit is that the input on one of the pairs is linked to the output of an opposite um, input um, output combo. So input two is connected to output four and input five is connecting to output three. Now output three corresponds to one and two and output four corresponds to five and six. So by linking input two with output four and input five with output three, that's where the magic happens with the flip-flop set reset circuit. Now the output of the 4011, really important of course, and output three is going into the seven pin, the discharge pin on the 555. 
Just through trial and error, I've discovered that the discharge pin is where I'm getting the, uh, the response, the action that I want. And the output 4 is going into pin 7 on this 555 corresponding to this push button. I tried it on the threshold pin 6, the trigger pin 2, but only the discharge pin 7 is how this circuit works. Pins 8 and 7, um, I've got a 10K ohm resistor and a 44K, but you can experiment with these values. Um, depending what kind of sound you want. And then pin seven and two also are connected by a resistor, a lower value resistor. The higher value is between um, eight gets um, connected to voltage in, and then the resistor connecting eight and seven on each 555, and then seven on, and two on each 555. And then the outputs of the 555 pin three are going into the LM386 amp module right here and the 8 ohm speaker. And pin 1 on the 555 goes to ground and the other opposite side of the push button switch there also goes to ground. Just want to explain a little bit about NAND logic. Um, when both buttons are in the up position, open position, they're both true values. So when we plug in the electricity, my understanding is arbitrary which side of the circuit um, is activated. In our example today, this is going to be activated and this is going to be silent. That means that this is getting a one and a zero value in NanoLogic that is a true value and this is going to be a false value, meaning it's getting two true inputs. Well, one of them is because the circuit the button is open, and that means it's getting an additional true value from this side. We're entering this false. When we hit this button, that's a false value against a true value coming in from the open button here. That means that's going to be on. It's going to set this side of the circuit is on. And this is going to be false because a true value as an output from here um, plus the true value here with the open button equals a false on this side. In NAND logic, a true and a true equals a false. That's going to be quiet. And then when we hit this button again, what's going to happen is that, again, that's a false value. Um, so we got one false. We got a true value here on the open button. Um, a false and a true in a NAND logic is true. So this is going to make noise and this is going to stay quiet because we've got a true value. This is outputting another true value. A true and a true in NAND logic is a false. We're going to have quiet over here. Got some different timer values going on, and how you how you do that is through the resistor combination on pins eight um, and seven, as I've described up here. You can play with these values here, and also these values from pins seven to two. You know, play around with those, as well as play around with the capacitor values here coming out of pin two. You want um, the positive lead of, of the capacitors going into pin two, and the negative lead going into ground on those capacitors. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel and we'll see you real soon.